what you have this feature is called paste preview. So if I select this thing and I say copy and I come down and I say paste. So here you see paste options which is I can see how it's going to look like if I were to keep the source formatting. I can see how it's going to look like if I merge the formatting. I can see how it's going to look like if I just keep the text as it is, just keep the text. So you, you, get, I mean, you get the theme, we're talking about being productive, saving this. Yeah. There's a lot of unproductive time that goes on when you do. You cut, paste and say, no, I don't like the way it looks. Let me change the different, let me just do the text only. This is about making you more productive faster. Or, or if you paste, right? then you want to remove formatting. Yeah, remove yes. formatting and stuff. And you, you do a preview, so before you actually do it, you see what you're going to do. And if you don't like it, you don't do it. Right? All right. So uh, other things quickly, uh, this thing called navigation view. Very often in a document, you don't know where to start and how to navigate, especially if it's a long document. We can break it by segments, by pages, the way you want it. You can search for a specific term, let's say for example, officer, and it will call out all the five matches. You can just jump in and out and check through the whole document map. I'm gonna go ahead and show you something what we call the backstage view. Backstage view is the director seat. Inside the document, you are doing things in the document. But there's a whole bunch of things that you want to do to the document, which is send it, share it, print it, do a whole bunch of things. We have created this backstage view, which compiles all of these things. Like my personal favorite, most hated thing used to do it in Word was printing, print preview. I would print preview, then I would undo, then I would go check the properties, then I'll change the layout and a whole bunch of other stuff. Go back and forth, back and forth, keep doing this all the time. Another piece of statistics for you. 60% of word users print 60 times in a month. That's a worldwide statistics. All right? So for example, this thing like print, now in one page, I can see how my document is going to look like if I were to change it from, from one orientation to the other, how I want to print it, what's the paper size, and I could just fire the print right from here. I could choose my printer. I could just go ahead and fire this print from one one particular page. You know, how many times you actually gone and printed and saw, no, I don't like this, go back, reset it, and redo it. You know, yeah, besides wasting time, you're wasting resources also, right? This is all about, you know, this part of it is making you faster, you know, saving you time, and also saving resources. Yeah. You could also do things like save directly to SkyDrive, save directly to your SharePoint. All of these features just make it simple for you to share, create, and you know, leverage both the PC as well as the cloud. I see publish as blog post. Yeah, so you could publish as blog post. If you connect to your blog, just say publish, spoof, write something in Word and get it published onto your blog. So now, you know, what we are not, in the interest of time, we're not sharing with you the, the, the co-authoring scenario, but now think of this document. This is a fairly complex document. It's not always that one person is going to be working on the entire document. You can have co-authoring, people working simultaneously on different sections. And just think about how powerful that is from a I was getting speaking to a law faster. firm the other day, and I was showing them co-authoring. They were delighted. Because in a law firm, contracts are complicated beasts. You know? The antitrust department would work on a particular thing. The the terms and conditions would be worked by a, another department. The punitive damages would be worked by another department. So the ability to bring it all in, in one document, is just of phenomenal use. You could do checkout check-in in the past. Let, let, that could happen in the past. But that, you need to check out one full document. And while it's been checked out, you can't do much and check in and stuff. Now we're taking it, the whole thing, inside a document. So check out a paragraph. Check out a sentence for all you get. And Something that would take five hours because let's say each person needs to work one hour. You think of it, you're combining it. You're having five people work simultaneously on it. Think how powerful that is from, from a company's perspective. PowerPoint is the place where all your analysis, all your hard work needs to come together and you need to be able to deliver that experience to the end users. So obviously, uh, we have built a few things which make it simpler for you. Pictures. They say picture is worth a thousand words. I say a picture is worth 20 slides. Yeah, so we have built by default picture editing tools inside PowerPoint as well as Word. So if I double click on this picture, you will see a whole bunch of picture editing tools which are built right here. For example, if I want to change the color, as you can see in the live preview, I can see how this picture is going to look like in different colors. I could just go ahead and change the color of this whole picture. 
Uh, this is not full Photoshop kind of 3D effect, but for all basic needs and purposes, we are building the tool right inside. You could add artistic effects like fade uh, the whole picture or add, uh, you know, flip the colors and, and things like that. You could also, this thing is interesting called remove the background. So if I click on this thing, a lot of the times you just want to make sure that, you know, you are removing a particular background and just doing that. So for example, in this case, I've taken a certain part of the picture wow. and made it transparent. That's pretty cool. Okay. It's just giving you the powerful tools, you know, to, to manipulate, uh, you know, it, it's, this is pictures, it's audio, video, even, you, yeah, the, video, video. Yeah, it's the other thing is sheer <laughs> transitions. We are building a whole bunch of transitions inside PowerPoint 2010 that allows you to communicate your ideas in a crisp, effective, and compelling manner to all of it. All of these features are built in, these transitions are built in. You could just go ahead and use that across. That's my favorite, That's the vortex. Favorite. <laughs> the vortex. Okay, let me go ahead and show you two more things. Prashish, one question. Yes. Is, is there any like search insert functionality also for pictures, or is it just more of editing? the picture that is already search insert like to find relevant picture and put it into a so you could do a clip art search today that's available you could insert from your own database mm -hmm. or third party databases you can get it from anywhere the other thing that that we are seeing a lot ever since this youtube phenomenon kicked off is people just love to get youtube videos in their powerpoint and you know video is becoming like is coming everywhere so you want to make sure I, I was presenting to a bunch of cfos a couple of months back there's this guy there who uh, I think he was from Japan. He was trying to show a video in his PowerPoint. And it was a very impressive video. It just would have made it. But he just struggled to get the video up onto his slide. <coughs> he resized the window, then he wanted to show only one part of the window, so he just showed like play, pause, play, pause. That's what he did. Those are things which people are struggling with video today in their PowerPoint presentation. We wanted to fix that. So for example, if I want to go ahead and insert a video onto my slide, so, oh, sorry. I'm going to go ahead and say insert video from the file. And let's say this is the video that I want to insert. So, this video is currently being inserted. Let me just double click the video and make sure that I change the way the whole video looks. So, if for example, I want to change the video orientation to a bit like this. And as well, I want to add effects to my video, which is I want to have a shadow of the video just below. There you go. And I could just go ahead and play the video today. Right? Now, that's just basic video at, uh, uh, insertion. Let me show you a few other things you could do with video inside. I could go ahead and obviously, as I talked about, change the color scheme of the video. Now, imagine this. It's a third party video coming from outside. I'll just go ahead and change the video because the green goes well with my green background. Okay, and when now when I play the video, it's gonna play and look green. I want to add effects, like I want to make each of these videos look as if they are a blast from the past. So I could do corrections here. I could also go ahead and and you know make it black and white if I want to. And all of these effects are, are, are possible today. But you know, even more, what do we want to do? Let's say, this is the video. A lot of the times, what, um, let me first change the format of the video. Color scheme just went haywire. So we go ahead and bring the video back. All right, so now with the same video, I want to go ahead and, and uh, you know, I can decide how I want to do it. This is the important one, trim video. Many times in a five minute video, you want to be able to show only 30 seconds. You could go ahead and do that basic video editing inside PowerPoint today. So I could say play from this point on to this point on. Wow. I press OK. And then when I press play, if you notice, it did not start from the start. 